Whether you're transcribing an early jazz record or writing in your arrangement, one of the trickiest parts is learning to harmonize effectively for three-piece horn sections. Most musicians have a good knowledge of theory, but it's tougher when you're applying that knowledge to creating something rather than analyzing an existing score. In this video, I'm going to explain some of my arranging techniques for sax sections and how I get around some common problems. I've chosen a Benny Carter alto sax solo to harmonize because he wrote wonderful sax solis and they often sound like a harmonized version of one of his solos. So first of all, here's Benny's sax solo from I'd Love It, recorded by McKinney's Cotton Pickers in 1929. Let's have a listen. That was the original solo. Now let's hear my finished three-piece version before we take a closer look at it. I recorded all the sax parts and Andrew Oliver kindly supplied the piano track. <laughs> Here are some basic rules for early jazz sax arranging if you're interested. You can pause the screen and check them out before we move on. Here's the first part of my score. I've mostly followed those rules, but there are a couple of things I wanted to point out. In red, I've circled cases where I've used the sixth. Benny uses that note often on the E-flat chords throughout, so I've used it in the other sax parts as well, as it's often a rich harmony note to choose. Often, over the D7 chords, he doesn't play a D itself, which means I was able to mimic an E-flat diminished or a D7 flat 9 chord, which creates a bit more interest. You can see this in the E-flats in the second alto and tenor parts. A common problem when harmonizing a solo like this is that sometimes the soloist has played notes outside the chord tones. Check out the box in blue. That sounds fine in a solo, but it can be tricky to harmonize because of those Gs. I've mostly chosen to emphasize the 3rd and the 7th of that D-flat chord. On this line, have a look at the blue box. Here the melody line uses notes outside the F7 chord, so I've had to harmonize those passing notes for the other saxes. The higher notes in the blue box mimic other chords, an F diminished, and then an E-flat. These will work over the rhythm section playing F7 because they go by so quickly and it will sound richer than if I had the other saxes stick with notes from the F7 chord, because all the saxes are now moving together. In the red box, you can see another passing chord I've added. I've treated the first eighth note as a B-flat augmented chord, so that the other sax parts are moving, instead of repeating the E-flat and G. The green box contains a bit of arranging mischief. Because it's an augmented chord here, I've used a whole tone scale to create some dissonance. The E natural in the tenor part, and the A natural in the alto two part, sound a bit crunchy. Two things to check out here. In the tenor part, I've underlined some specific note choices in red. I've added the sixth to the E flat, but then I've used a B flat, which isn't part of the D7 chord. I wanted to add more movement to this part, and this has created a D augmented chord, which resolves in the next note to a D7. Then in the blue box, I've got that problem again, where Benny treats the D flat chord as an E flat. Here, I've chosen to keep the other saxes out of the way by putting them lower down. They're also moving in contrary motion to the lead line, which makes a nice change as it resolves down to the C7. So I'm going against some of my basic rules here. The saxes are in open voicing, and they're moving in contrary motion as well. In this next bit, I've broken yet another of those rules. I've got the lower two saxes playing repeated notes instead of following the movement in the lead line. I did this because they're playing quite low, and it would sound muddy if there was a lot of movement down there, 
it would also be tricky to play. Some weird stuff coming up now. In the blue box, Benny's line over the C minor chord is pretty weird when you look at it from a theoretical perspective. Sounds great, but it was hard to harmonise. I actually ended up treating it as an E-flat chord in the harmony parts. The rhythm section will be hammering out the C, so it's going to end up sounding like a C minor 7th chord. In the red box, I've used diminished chords again to harmonise the non-chord notes in the melody line. This is a really useful technique. When all else fails, harmonise with diminished chords. It's especially useful if you have four saxes. Then, in the green box, we see that Benny was treating this as an A-flat minor 6 chord, not an A-flat. I followed his lead. I would consider changing the rhythm section chord for this bar as well if I were doing a whole arrangement. As we get to the end of the bridge, there was a tricky passage to harmonise where Benny plays what's basically a pentatonic scale over the B7. I harmonise this mostly by using the pentatonic scale in the other parts as well, but I've added the fourth, an E natural, in the second alto part for a bit of variety. When I went to play these parts later on, I discovered that they were quite hard to play, a good reminder to be careful when writing moving parts in the saxophone's lower register. In the red box, you can see I've added a passing chord by having the tenor move to an E flat in between those D naturals. It turns the chord into an F minor seventh for a bit of variety on those B flat chords. Again, Benny treats the D flat seven as an E flat chord. I tried a variety of things here, but none of them sounded very good. So I decided to use another trick. For those three notes, the saxes are playing unison, or an octave lower for the tenor. This is a cool effect to make a line jump out for emphasis. It also creates an impact where the richer harmony comes back in again. Here's the final line. In blue, you can see where I've deviated from the lead line to add more movement, accentuating the change in chords by approaching them from a semitone below in the harmony parts. Then in red, I've repeated my earlier trick of inserting a B-flat augmented passing chord to add harmonic movement, especially important to make this last phrase shout a bit more. Arranging can be a challenging and isolating activity. Even though the problem solving process can be enjoyable in its own right, the real reward is in hearing musicians collaborating in bringing your work to life. I can't wait for that to be possible again. Mm -hmm.